am recording this and it's going to go up on YouTube. And okay. Um, we so, didn't go, we didn't go grab anything yet. So, okay. Yeah. So we are looking at um, just paper. Look, you can get kind of crazy, but uh, paper markers. And if you have Sharpies, Sharpie. If you have watercolor, you could get watercolor. So any of those, mm -hmm. so markers, something, watercolor, or, um, and then a pen. Okay, let sure. me go grab some stuff really quick. Perfect. Perfect. Do you know where the paper is mine? Um, I have stuff paper. The, the big fat watercolor paper that we used before. So. We've been um, doing some artwork and in the back, so we have all the watercolors out. Oh, nice. Yeah, awesome. they're not, we only have like two, but colors, but yeah, that's right. Work. Cool. And Mariah, you should come sit here. Oh, there they are. Just got out of the thing when our, this was kind of bent. Nice. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Cool. So today, welcome to this. It's a little awkward angle, but I want to make sure you can see the um, what's going on here. So today we're going to do some introduction to Zen tangling, and Zen tangling is a really easy way to just start to create patterns, and it's just a way to be nice and creative um, and kind of do whatever you want. So. Some, uh, I'm going to show you one of the things we're going to work on here is a um, couple of different ways to bring color and the Zen tangling patterns. So what I've done, you should be able to see pretty okay, is that I've gotten, um, just got the red out and then I just painted red squares. And I went through the rainbow and then after I painted each one of these, then I just played with filling them in with different types of patterns. So that's what we're going to do. That's our first one. So go ahead and grab either marker. And since you have watercolor, we'll play with watercolor, but you could do it with marker. And here's my open sheet. So for right now, I think instead of doing a rainbow, and you're more than welcome, you could do whatever you wanted. Um, I think I'm just gonna play with this red color. I'm gonna fill my brush with red. And then I'm gonna bring a little square of red here. And you don't need to have them be squares. And we can also play with kind of with mixing different colors together and different amounts of the water so that we're starting to create these fun color mixed blobs. So we'll just spend a couple of minutes creating that space for the Zen Tangle. That one kind of looked like it had hair. Okay. I think that you can be creative like however you want to. She's just giving you kind of yeah. a, a guideline or it could look like this. You could do this this way. So one way is to make these blobs of different colors and color mixes and 
Maybe I want a blue one over here. I'm trying to create, oh, I haven't used any orange. Let's see sort of what's happened. So we're just experimenting a little bit with color. And these color blobs, blobs, yeah, are going to be the container, are going to be what we're going to then tangle on top of. And it's so nice I that have, you can have. Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. So we're, I'm putting in like my blue right now. Yeah. And it's, I'm, and I'm doing watercolor and it's like really kind of, I feel like a little bit muddy. Like I want something that's like a little bit brighter here. I can show you. A little Maybe, bit brighter, you know, yeah. My yeah. battery is low. It doesn't look that okay. bad in there. But do you have any that's recommendations great. for that? Yeah, so the, the less, and I can just, I'll show you what I did, just did. Um, so the less water that you have on your brush, the richer the color is going to be. I'm using a watercolor brush, but if you don't have a watercolor brush and you're just using a regular brush, mm -hmm. you're just gonna take a little bit less of the paint I'm sorry, a little bit less of the water and really start to saturate. Um, and that was a bad example because I picked light blue. <laughs> mm -hmm. so I'm filling up. And so I want my watercolor to be a little bit more dense. And just the nature of the watercolor, if I make a longer brush stroke, I'm going to have less paint to work with over time. Now another way that you can do it, if you like kind of washy look, you can take your brush and just paint water on your paper first and then pick up some paint on the brush. And this is why you could use markers as well. So pick up some paint on the brush. So I've got green here. And then I'm going to go back over where I just had the water. Ooh, that's cool. So that's, that's going to washy. give it, yeah, that's going to give it a little bit more of that washed look. So let me just show you since you're asking if, if I wanted to do instead of watercolors, if I wanted to use markers, I'm going to use that same technique where I'm picking up water and brushing water on my page. I'm filling that page up and it's nice that you have watercolor paper because it's meant to do this. Then I have my marker and I'm just going to draw with my marker over it. So here I'm using, uh -huh. and it depends. Is that, I, just, um, is that just an ink marker or is that like a special it, kind of marker? Well, it's a, I mean, it's, it's called a watercolor dual tip marker. Okay. But, you could use, but you could use any. Hi, welcome. We're playing with our watercolors to create a, um, a base for the Zen Tangle. So you could use any marker as well. Does that answer your question, Lily? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay, cool. And I love creating these different blobs. Yeah. Um, I think it's just really fun to like this one, just getting some different types of um, color blends that I may not have done before. So here we're using this as our, our base for the Zentangle. And I'm just gonna show what some of this, and Zentangling, um, people get really into it. There's a whole, and it's, there are books and books and books and you can do all, I mean, really get very um, fine point markers and um, thick markers and creating different patterns. But this is just a little um, study in different types of patterns for Zen tangling. So that was using my watercolor base as a backdrop. And now maybe I'm starting to find and I might just blow on this. I'm starting to have some that are starting the, of my blobs that are beginning to dry out. 
So that's, and while um, you all are still doing that, I'm gonna show you the secondary. So go ahead and keep just making your watercolor blobs your base for the Zentangle. And then I'm gonna get out my, um, my demo from another Zentangling. So here I've decided um, I did a class at the Natural History Center based on Zentangle feathers. And so here we have um, a feather that I cut out and Zentangled on top of. And that would be, you can do, I mean, you don't have to do feather. I thought feather was pretty easy. It's, you know, you can kind of imagine whatever type of feather that you wanted to create here. And what I did was I sort of just made it up, but two ways to do this would be to create your outline for the Zentangle on a sheet. And you can see that I'm not being very particular about this. This is all just sort of like I, I put in the description. It's just an introduction to just get some other um, creative ideas starting to flow so that you can do this later on your own. So here I have my outline and I might break this up a little bit by drawing some definitive lines around so that I'm going to fill in those spaces. So I started to block some different parts off. And inside of there, I'm gonna create my different patterns. So one pattern, really simply, if I wanted to do it with black marker, I'm just gonna do some stripes or parallel lines. So I'm working within that defined area to create my pattern. And another area, I might want to do little mounds. I'm just going to do a couple. And like I said, you can get much more intricate. So this is starting to almost look like a feather in itself. So here I started to create a little bit different pattern and I might want to fill that with small dots. Or maybe I want to fill every other one with color. So I'm going to start to bring some color into this and feel free to use markers or if you wanted to, you could bring do your watercolor. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like in just a minute. So here, this one, I just filled it in with marker. It's a really simple um, demo right now. If I wanted to use my watercolors, I might, actually watercolor along the outside of my feather, creating a little bit different idea of positive and negative space. And then maybe watercolor inside. let that dry and then do my zentangling on top. So that's one idea if you wanted to zentangle within a shape. So here we are back at our blobs. How are you guys doing on blobs? You have some blobs going that are dry? Yeah, yeah ours are still a little bit wet, but I think we have enough 
drive to move on. Yeah. So go ahead and grab a marker. The fine point markers, of course, are going to make little finer patterns. Ooh, I've got, now that this dried, I have some really interesting looking combinations. It's kind of fun. And within my blob, I'm going to start to, maybe I'll start in the corner and start just doing some dots around the outside. So here I'm defining my Zentangle face with some dots. And then I might want to move on to triangles. I find that picking some really comfortable shapes instead of trying to get very intricate. Um, just starting with those really simple shapes, squares, circles, rectangles, triangles. Um, once you start to work in the more simple shapes, then you can fine tune them later. Um, maybe my triangle begins to turn into some dots inside of it or some shading if you if I was using a pencil. And really you're just letting your brain kind of wander and yeah. I mean very, very, very simple. I'm just letting my brain wander and create what it allowing it to just kind of decide what wants to happen. So on this other one I'm seeing some open spaces. So I'm going to draw circles around those open spaces and then maybe some more circles. And I think I'll, for this one, find a way to connect the circles. Use a wavy line with some arrows. Wavy line and arrows. And that might be all that I want to do within this blob. I'm going to go back to my first couple of examples. So here was inside. I found lots of different ways to fill up the space there. And then playing with patterns and shapes. It said all super simple. Now, if I wanted to get a little bit more in depth, I'm going to get out my blue. Okay, and find the white background. Um, there's a really easy way to turn this into a gratitude practice as well. So I might want to fill my shape with things that I'm grateful for, like plants. And start to create some zentangle with the word plants inside. So perhaps some little leaves. The fun thing about this is that you can't really mess up. And the more that you do it, you find different shapes that really speak to you. You end up doing things that look similar and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, Oh, I never thought you might you'd look at somebody else's and say, oh, I never thought about doing it like that. I don't know if he'll be able to see this, but in my plants, I started to bring some leaves in there. I think it's kind of hard to see on that background.
if you're interested in doing um, more of the sh like filling in the shapes, you can. Um, I've seen lots of folks who do like outlines of different animals. Um, what a dog or a bird, and then Zentangle within that. How are you all doing? Good. You got some stuff going. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna play with my um, my blobs again. I'm going to fill up the different blob colors with different patterns in the Zen Tangle. Since lots of us are home with one or two other people, this is another fun thing to do where kind of like um, I did this for my class with adults. It's kind of like Mad Libs, where one person starts working on a Zen Tangle, and you spend like maybe five or ten minutes, and then you pass the artwork to the next person, and you go back and forth. So you're creating, co-creating. Oh my gosh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm I'm like the Can we show you? How's it going? Yeah, let me, I'm going to make you big, so I want to say. I'm not done. We're not done. Of course not. I take. And we just all do the, the oh, oh, yeah. That, that's so great. Totally, those bubbles are really fun. Yeah, yeah, awesome. we're having a blast. That's great, cool. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more thing. I don't know if you all have these um, jelly pens. I love jelly pens. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> so once you're, instead of doing black, you could have a jelly pen, and then you're, whether it's white or whatever, so then you're using the jelly pen. Um, I think I have some that are, uh, yeah. let's see here, let me get into this dark one. So then instead of just using black, then you can fill in with, um, with the white jelly pen. And that's just another dimension to bring in. Oh yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. It looks, I love jelly pens. Do you have any? Hey. Amazon has them, so. <laughs> My new best friends. I have, Amazon. I have a 13 year old. Yes, we have jelly pens. Yeah, yes. Jelly pens are the best. So, great. I hope you all had fun. You looked like you're getting into it. I'm pretty stoked. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, it was really fun. It was so nice to see you too and like have a live Ooh. lesson from somebody out there. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll be doing other stuff. Um, so, and then if you have anything that you're, <laughs> I love that skull behind you. That is just really. I'm, pa I'm painting it. It's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I have a friend who's a printmaker. And so his support for homeschooling was he brought over this old, like pr practice print on butcher paper and Mariah's been painting it. That is so great. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay. Well, have fun. Thanks. Yeah.
Thank you so much. We'll see you next time, hopefully. Cool. Bye. Bye, Kate.